Next round of questions will be the candidates for House District 95. Uh, Representative Rice, you're up. Georgia is second in the country in ownership of plug-in electric cars, in large part because of the $5,000 state tax credit provided for the purchase or lease of these cars. In the last session, an attempt was made to gut this tax. If you are elected, what position will you take on this issue? As I understand, there will be another attempt to strip away this tax credit. Will you support retaining the credit as is, keep the credit but limit it, or will you vote to remove it entirely? Please be specific. Well, that depends on what you think the credit actually is at, at this point in time. You know, the interesting thing about that is you ought to all go out and buy a leaf right now, right? Because you could lease a leaf and effectively pay nothing for the lease between the federal credit and the state credit that you can get for that up to $5,000. So it, the, the issue in the deal budget was being able to close the budget in terms of balancing revenue versus expense. A tax credit is effectively an expense to the budget. You have, have to be able to fund that. The governor made an attempt to, to cut out that particular uh, uh, tax credit. We preserved that tax credit. It never made it out of the Ways and Means Committee, which I sit on, and probably will not in the future, if I have anything to say about it, my guess is that that will go away as an issue. Thank you. Um, you know, any type of tax credits or tax cuts or tax incentives have consequences, of course, and they should be intended and are intended for a specific purpose to generate you know, in this particular instance, to promote environmental stewardship, and I, I, support, I would support that until we look at our budget in a very large scheme, you know. For instance, uh, the elimination of the birthday tax, what did that do to our county level? You know, we lost half a million dollars to our education budget Mr. Alvin Wilbanks mentioned that two years ago when I attended the budget hearing. And um, before that, money was being collected at the county level, local level. Now it's being collected at the state level, so the state allocates it. We lost more control of our local resources. So it, it would really, any type of uh, tax credit or incentives has to be looked at on a larger scheme. Thank you. Representative Rice. Well, unfortunately, that's not correct. What's not correct about it is that for 10-year outlook, we looked at all the, the county and local incomes, revenues, that were generated by the birthday tax. They never varied more than 5% over a 10-year period of time. And the counties and the, the, the local governments were guaranteed their highest year revenue out of the stream that came in from the Title Ave Valorum tax. Title Ave Valorum tax is no sales tax, no birthday tax, one-time title fee. It's a great aid to the people who don't want to pay on their birthday. And, and that's that. <laughs> right, right, right. All right. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Howard, Gwinnett restricts beekeeping to only residential agricultural zoo zone properties, the most restrictive of Metro Atlanta counties. Since the Director of Planning hasn't brought the issue before the Board, will you initiate removing that zoning restriction? Okay, if any of you know me, I have animals and they come through my house and so, and I have to check with our, our planning and development to make sure that a pot belly pig was okay in our house for nine months and now he's at a sanctuary. So, yeah, he destroyed my garden and my doorways all the way through my house. So, I actually love bees. I love the idea of having chickens. But the, but the reality is um, I have very tolerant neighbors, and they know me, and they put up with me. But there are neighbors that don't want to be in a neighborhood in close proximity to each other to have um, bees or chickens. And... I know that everybody ha keeps their hobby chickens very, very well, but the, the reality is that there are some that don't. And so when people move in, and, and I think that we have to, whoops, but um, the rule is, is that you have to have three acres or more. And so I think that that is a reasonable thing. And I can talk to you more about it um, offline.
Well, I don't really think that we need to have, you know, uh, tens of beehives on a small piece of property, although I don't really see the problem with having one. Right now, the lack of bees in our environment in general is decimating, and it's actually going to impact our food sources at some point because we don't have anything to pollinate the plants and the food. So I think perhaps we might want to relook at, you know, encouraging some type of beekeeping without going overboard. I mean, you can expand and just go crazy with uh, a ruling, or you can kind of work together and see if you can come to some type of a decision that might be workable for an entire neighborhood. Commissioner Howard. I also encourage everybody to go to the Environmental Heritage Center. I worked on a program that is the Bee Festival, and it encourages um, people who do have three acres. We have a lot of people in the county that have three acres of land, and it's teaching them how to. I, I completely agree that we need to make sure that we maintain the level of bees in, in our community. And so I really encourage people, and I love teaching about it, and I love um, – I, and actually, there's five beehives that are over at the Environmental Heritage Center that I helped put together. So I'm a big fan of bees, if you didn't, couldn't tell. <laughs>